dear students welcome to the last session of this presentation that is modern physics and quantum mechanics in this session i will explain you one application of schrodinger wave equation that is particle in one dimensional potential well in his book professor h c verma iit kanpur on quantum physics says quantum physics is a beautiful subject having rigorous mathematical foundation and at the same time has flavors of philosophy it invites lots of abstract imagination but connects the events of material world to the fantasies of imagination no doubt study of quantum physics and quantum mechanics is always fascinating usually elaborate mathematical techniques are required to solve schrodinger equation hence the study of quantum mechanics is normally reserved for advanced level however we will attempt a simple problem in order to enjoy the flavor of this equation the simplest problem is particle in one dimensional potential well before i proceed let me make one thing clear quantum mechanics demands many complex mathematical operations i deliberately avoid those things such as operator algebra and related concepts first let me under let me explain the meaning of potential well here for the sake of explanation i take gravitational potential well look at this diagram this is ground that is earth surface and i have a well here and also one high rise building and there are three guys one over here let me name as name him as a one over here i am i will call him as b and one more c over here now ask one common question to all of them ask them to tell about gravitational potential energy of each one of them ask them to measure potential energy of each and every one if you ask a b and c do you think they all give same answer no a says mine is zero b is negative and c is positive yes e is correct because e is taking this as a reference so with respect to reference ground level e is at height of 0 so h is 0 therefore mg h is 0 but this fellow is at negative height minus h therefore this energy is negative but this fellow is at height of h therefore his energy is positive therefore a is right when it comes to b b says mine is 0 both a and c are positive yes he is also correct but if you ask the same question to c he says mine is zero because he is taking this as reference both a and b are negative because with respect to this level a is at negative height even b is also now the question who is correct all of them are correct because they all are talking about potential energy with respect to their reference levels this is quite important now we shall consider the answer of b right now he is at zero level and his energy is zero and therefore he is said to be in the well he is said to be in the well in order to come out of this well he must be given extra energy of mgh where h is height of this well so m is mass of this person g is gravity acceleration due to gravity h is depth or height of the well so unless you give that extra energy b cannot come over here this is known as potential well this is potential well if height of the well is finite then it is finite potential well otherwise it is infinite potential well after understanding the meaning of potential well now let us consider one such potential well this is potential well of width a and height is infinite this symbol represents that height is infinite and one particle is trapped inside the potential well this is the particle now let me make some assumptions over here first one in this model a quantum particle say electron is assumed to be trapped inside the well and it is one dimensional potential well of infinite height and width a so this is the width a second assumption walls of the well are extremely hard so that 
collision between wall and particle is perfectly elastic. See this particle is moving to and fro. Each time when it collides with the walls, it rebounds back immediately without spending even a fraction of second over there. So therefore collisions are considered as perfectly elastic. And finally, the potential energy of the particle is zero inside the well and infinite outside the well. Particle is restricted to move only along x axis that is from x equal to 0 to x equal to a. That means as long as particle is present inside the well its potential energy V is 0. If at all it want to come out of the well it must possess infinite potential energy and it is restricted to move only along x axis to and fro. That is why the whole well is known as one dimensional potential well. Now let us take some boundary conditions. The first boundary condition psi equals 0 when v equals infinity. You know the meaning of psi equal to 0 that is probability of finding the particle. It is 0 when v equals infinity. You know where is v is infinity that is outside the well. That means particle cannot be seen outside the well either here or here. Second one psi not equal to 0 when v equal to 0. Where v is 0? Inside the well. That means inside the well potential energy of the particle is 0 and therefore probability of finding the particle is not equal to 0. Particle can be located anywhere inside the well. Finally, psi equal to 0 for x equal to 0 or less than 0. Equal to a or greater than a. Less than 0 means outside. Greater than a means outside. But what is this equal to 0? That means over here. According to the third assumption, particles energy is 0 inside and infinite outside. Energies are over. According to second assumption, walls are extremely hard. When particle hits the wall, it cannot be seen at all over there because it immediately rebounds back. Therefore, if you try to catch the particle here, certainly you will fail. That is the meaning of psi equal to 0 for x equal to 0. Same story you can apply even x equal to a also. I hope you understood the boundary conditions. Now with these boundary conditions, let us proceed with case 1. First case, outside the well. Outside the well means either here or here. V is infinity. Now recall Schrodinger wave equation. Substitute V as infinity. You get this equation. Now without doing much calculations, without doing any exercise, just assume or think or guess the value of psi so that LHS also becomes 0. That means for what value of psi LHS becomes equal to RHS that means 0 equal to 0 only possibility psi equals 0 when you put 0 here 0 here then both the terms become 0 that means the possible solution for this equation is psi equal to 0 and question whether is it an acceptable solution yes it is an acceptable solution how that means the probability of finding the particle and hence probability density outside the well is 0. That means if you take psi equal to 0, you can say there is no particle outside the well. Yes, there is no particle outside the well. Therefore, psi equal to 0 is an eigenfunction for case 1. Now let us take case 2. Now we are inside the well. Inside the well, as I told, V equal to 0. So, there is no potential energy for the particle inside the well. Therefore, the Schrodinger wave equation takes this form, put in the place of V, 0. Now, again you give a guesswork. Think about Psi. Again, Psi equal to 0 is going to be a possible solution. Because 0 into anything plus 0 into anything, 0 only. But... Now the question is, can we accept this? Is it a possible solution? No, it cannot be a possible solution. Why? Because if, it, you, if you accept psi equal to 0, 
it means there is no particle inside the well but particle is very much inside the well therefore psi equal to zero cannot be considered as a solution okay let us proceed now make some assumptions or make some substitutions take this whole thing as k square then this equation becomes d square psi by dx square plus k square psi equal to zero this is a second order differential equation and there are many methods to find the solution in mathematics i skip all the steps required to find the solution i straight away write the solution that is psi equal to c cos kx plus d sin kx call it as equation number three well let us proceed further the solution for that equation is psi equal to c cos kx plus d sin kx here c and d are constants both c and d cannot be zero any one of them can be zero but both cannot be zero suppose if both of them is are zero then psi equal to zero which is not an eigen function well let us proceed if you put first uh, third boundary condition that is x equal to zero psi equal to zero and simplify equation number three you will get c equal to zero again the same boundary condition but this time put x equal to a psi equal to zero in the equation number three and simplify you will get d sin k a equals zero but as i said just now d cannot be zero because already c is zero only possibility here is sin k a equals zero so when d not equal to zero sin k a must be zero okay if sin k a must be zero then k a shall be sin inverse of zero that means k a is n times pi where n is an integer or you can write for k that is k equals n pi divided by a let me call it as equation number 4 well from equation 2 and 4 2 is in my previous slide 2 and 4 we get back this equation that is 8 pi square me by h square equals k square k is replaced by equation number 4 and then simplify further e becomes n square h square by 8 ma square where n is an integer according to this equation e depends only on n therefore it is better to write e as e n that is n square h square by 8 ma square this is known as eigen value well substitute n equals 1 n cannot be 0 suppose if n equal to 0 then e becomes 0 that means the total energy of the particle is 0 that is not true actually total energy is not 0 only potential energy is 0 therefore n cannot be 1 well if you put n equals 1 then it becomes least energy i call it as ground state energy or i also call it as zero point energy that is h square by 8 ma square so it is called zero point energy well the wave function that is equation number 3 can be rewritten as psi equal to 0 plus d sin kx that is d sin kx k is replaced by n pi by a into x so psi n equals d sin n pi by a into x now we shall find the value of d we know d not equal to 0 but what exactly the value of d is to find d we have to make use of normalization here i give you one small assignment just go through all these steps very simple calculation and finally you get d as root of 2 pi a this is the final equation for psi n and this is now called eigen function this is an eigen function dear students please practice all these steps involved in the calculation of d it's a matter of 2 to 3 minutes that's all we have come to the last stage of this presentation uh, here we shall discuss energy eigen values and probability densities see in the previous derivation we obtained these two equations that is psi n equals root of 2 by a into sin of n pi by a into x that is eigen function and this is energy eigen value now let us substitute for n and x and calculate different e and different psi values first case case number 1 put n equals 
then we get ground state energy that is also called as zero point energy. So in this equation if you put n equals 1 then E becomes E naught that is h square by 8 ma square and eigenfunction becomes psi 1 equals root of 2 by a into sin of pi by a into x that is n becomes 1 pi by a into x. x can take any values from 0 to a. Now let me take first x equal to 0 then psi 1 becomes 0 because sin of pi by a into 0 that is 0. When psi 1 is 0 modulus of psi 1 square this is called probability density that also becomes 0. Now let me take another value for x that is a by 2 and simplify then it is root of 2 by a into sin of pi by a into a by 2 that is x is a by 2. So cancel a a it becomes sin of pi by 2 sin of pi by 2 is 1 so 1 into root of 2 by a so it is root of 2 by a then modulus of square of this is 2 by a next put x equal to a psi 1 becomes 0 and psi 1 square also becomes 0 so these results can be graphically represented like this so this is a diagram of psi 1 and this is psi 1 square so psi 1 is 0 at x equal to 0 maximum that is root of 2 by a that is at center for a by 2 and then 0 once again so at x equals a next psi 1 square 0 and then 2 by a this one 2 by a and then 0 once again here let us repeat the same thing this time by taking n equals 2 then e1 don't write it as e2 this becomes e1 e1 is 2 square of this much that is 4 times of this much that is 4 e naught so e1 is equal to 4 e naught and psi 2 is equal to root of 2 by a into so much. Now take different values for x again from 0 to a in between you can have so many values keep on simplifying them I advise you to do all these calculations once again practice and then you will get these results and plot these results graphically the graph looks like this see the difference 0 maximum 0 negative maximum and again 0 then when you take the modulus of this it also becomes positive that is probability density so this is the graphical representation for case number 2 see in case 1 n is 1 so we had only one peak in case 2 n equals 2 so we have two peaks if you continue this argument for n equals infinity there must be infinite peaks here is a representation n equals 1 1 peak n equals 2 2 peaks like that n equals infinity infinite peaks means the probability of finding the particle will be same almost everywhere whereas in this case probability is maximum only at the center that is a by 2 next this is E0 energy corresponds to ground state this is E1 that is nothing but 4 times E0 so like this you can calculate the energy correspond to n equal to 3 n equal to 4 like that and if you continue the gap between the energy levels reduces and finally energy levels are very closely packed so that energy appears to be continuous so when n equals infinity quantization concept nearly vanishes and energy becomes almost continuous so this type of conclusion can be drawn from this discussion well with this i have come to the end of modern physics and quantum mechanics session i hope you all enjoyed this if you have any doubts or any questions you can contact me via email or you can even call me also Thanks for your concentration. Thanks for your patience. Please give me your feedback.